This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. MP Semoso calls on government to ratify Bougainville referendum. Budget allocation for law and order sector questioned in parliament. And NID services underfunded. A very good evening. This is Saturday's News. I'm Malcolm Waira. Thank you for joining us. Member for Chuave Open, James Nomane, questioned the Ministry of Internal Security on the budget allocation for the law and order sector following the rise in criminal activities experienced in various districts in Simbu province and other parts of the country. MP Nomane has called on the government to devolve powers to the governors and seize the system of centralization. These concerns were raised during the grievance debate on the floor of parliament yesterday in Port Moresby. In the 2023 budget allocation, the law and order sector received the highest budget appropriation with funding allocation of 500 million kina, mainly to focus on addressing law and order issues in the country. On the floor yesterday, member for Chuave Open, James Nomane, raised concerns on the funding for the law and order sector as crime is on the rise within Simbu province then why are you given appropriation as a minister? I asked where the law and order funding went, Mr. Acting Speaker. If my good internal security minister received 500 million, Kina, half a billion, my interest, Mr. Speaker, is how much of this money was given to Simbu province? The member reiterated that on many occasions, governors and local MPs get the blame and are bombarded with the increase in crime rates in their districts and provinces. Especially my governor, are bombarded and blamed for the rise in crime, for the law and order deteriorating in the province. And there's only so much he can do. And on that note, Acting Speaker, I really urge the government to devolve powers to the provinces. We can't centralize anymore. The frustrated member further elaborated on the issue. So there's been no meeting with members from Simple Province to tell us from the half a billion I received, this is how much Simple got. You got 20 million. You got 100 million. Why didn't we have any police presence on the ground when our Condom Agound or Provincial Assembly building was just completely destroyed. He further added that Simbu, like other provinces, deserve funding allocation to mitigate criminal activities in the province. And if good ministers with appropriation aren't in the business of operationalized government policy and government programs, then you're not in the business of being a minister. You've got to give it up. You've got to resign. This is my big call to the government, Mr. Acting Speaker, that 2023, we want to know what plans the government had for Simbu, what Simbu got, what Simbu didn't get. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Member for Bogia Open, Robert Naguri, asked a question without notice to the Minister for Internal Security, Pira Tsamalili Jr., regarding civil identity and registry officers in Bogia district who worked without pay for the five fortnights. He said this has been the case for other provinces as well. MP Naguri acknowledged all CIR officers for their efforts in carrying out their duties despite the lack of funds to carry out their tasks. He further stated that all registrations are being made and the data from Bogia were sent to the central facilities in Waigani. However, no NID or birth certificate has been received as yet. Is the office running out of consumables or what is the problem? 
do they have funds to continue on? And number three, there is a long printing queue all around Papua New Guinea. They are waiting for their birth certificates and their NID cards. We are all struggling to try and get our people registered. In response to his question, Minister Siamalili Jr. assured all NID staff members that they will be paid before the year ends and he will make sure the same issues does not happen in the future. This law walk about long, only moving civil registry go long. Planning and currently now, uh, civil registry under long determination, blow in 2002, long internal security, it sits as a project. So as we all know, as a project, you get funded a certain amount, and it's under a PIP project. He said the CIR is annually funded 10 million kina by the government, which is enough to cover staff within the organization only and not operational expenditure. He further elaborated that CIR operates with a 10 million kina budget with a 40 million kina expected output. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Port Moresby National School of Excellence held its 28th Outcome-Based Education and Second Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics graduation yesterday. Among the 270 grade 12 students who graduated was 21-year-old Lumai Lumai from Western Province. The grade 12 student Iumai was thankful to Port Mosby National School of Excellence for equipping him with the knowledge. Young Iumai aspires to become an aircraft engineer just like his uncle and is determined to turn his dream into reality. He said, through prayers and hard work, he has made it this far and is thankful to God for his endless mercy upon his life. My life has been tough but... I thank God that I have survived, and as well as other students. Uh, we all see Port Moresby National School of Excellence as a school of excellence, but there are many students who go through achieves. Mr. Heumai encouraged other young people in the country to push for what they dream to become in life. He said whether it is in their education or other careers, young ones should not give up because tough times do not last long. Louis Maingu, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The Department of Implementation and Rural Development and the Teaching Service Commission yesterday had 51 public servants inducted at the Somare Institute of Leadership and Governance Main Hall in Waigani, Port Mosby. In a momentous event held at Silag Main Hall, five public servant officers from the Department of Implementation and Rural Development and 45 from the Teaching Service Commission, including the chairman of TSC, Samson Wagihomi, were officially inducted into the public service. The ceremony marked a significant milestone for these individuals who graduated under the recently rebranded Somari Institute of Leadership and Governance. It saw new public servants taking the oath of office before the state rep, Mr. Vincent Bailey, of which they solemnly commit and uphold the principles and responsibilities of their roles. They were awarded the National Certificate tool in government that symbolized the official entry. This you will know also the do's and the don'ts that you should not be doing in the department or the commission and what you should be doing. Congratulations to you all. And complete this course. I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk to you, all of you. And we don't want to talk to you, but the journey is the light has come through. Go through the spell light. And with the guidance of God in heaven, nobody else. With that, uh, on behalf of my family, and the commission, everybody, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Claire Mauta, National MTV News. 
During the oath-taking ceremony yesterday at the Silag Main Hall, 51 public servants who graduated are the first pioneers to receive certificates under the rebranded Somare Institute of Leadership and Governance. What we'll give you now is a pillar. Robert Nemala, the director of the Sumari Institute of Leadership and Governance, was pleased to announce to the graduates that they will be receiving not just one, but two certificates. What we're doing is a lifetime training. All right, it is a lifetime. You're not doing it because you want to meet the requirement of serving in the public service. But the training that you are doing within and outside of public service, it's a lifetime uh, training that you are doing. Make it as principle, so it governs and guides you. All right, so you become a responsible person in the public service, in the community, in the homes, wherever you go. So make it principle, what you're going through. And the ceremony not only celebrated the official inclusion of these individuals into the public service, but also highlighted the government's dedication to fostering a skilled and knowledgeable workforce. The newly inducted public servants are now poised to contribute actively to the growth and development of the nation. Claire Mauta, National MTV News. Member for Daulo Open, Ekim Gorosahu, on the floor of parliament, yesterday wanted clarification from the Department of Higher Education through the Minister for Higher Education and Sports, Don Poile, on the registration of colleges in Eastern Highlands Province. During question without notice on the floor of parliament yesterday, member for Daulo Open, Ekim Gorosahu, directed a question to the Minister for Higher Education and Sports, Don Polie, on the registration of a number of colleges in the Eastern Islands province. Three or four new practices colleges will come up. Now, all in all, in all, in all, in all, now, let's go to school, uh, let's go to teachers' colleges, whether I will raise it or no got, and plenty of people will get costed. Let's go to teachers' college, and um, let's go to teachers' college, 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 let's go to teachers' college. Minister, me ask me to talk to people from the United Islands. Whether number one, there's a school, uh, there's a teacher's college or registered or no got. Prior to answering the question, Minister Polier pointed out the importance of the partnership between the government and churches to deliver essential services. We've been visiting Dalo a long time, and we visiting this is the school Four Square Teachers College. Um, and all um, number of triple mentioning, we have been visiting him. Uh, but Mr. Acting Speaker, we must uh, talk all the same, all post-square church, all the all Narvlo Good Blood Church, uh, partner one them government, long uh, Marabi Rosen, and make him good blood work, we look him good blood classroom, only build him all here. And I look him only put him a lot of sacrifice in the work going inside, and I am a master, and I uh, acknowledge him to the work I've been making. And I talk him all, and I talk all the same, but I play, register him all. Come on, it long, standard long, uh, high education, this is a uh, quality framework. The minister, however, advised that he will provide the response in the next sitting. Sharon Engnui. Honorable members, I now urge in Parliament to 22. National MTV News. Member for Mendy Munihu and Vice Minister for State-Owned Enterprises, Rafael Tonpi, in a news conference, revealed some of the major developments in the health, education, and infrastructure development that his district is experiencing since he took office. He also announced some of the proposed plans for the district. Mandy Munihu MP Rafael Tonpi has revealed to the media that under his leadership, his district has seen major developments in various sectors. However, Tonpi has appealed to his people to change their mindset to see more of the positive development. It's the people that 
you need to change. Because the many is our place and our district and everybody has a responsibility and that is to be a good citizen. The member then elaborated on the development in the education space, stating that his main priority is in the education sector, given his faith in education to pave a way for positive changes. When we have an educated community in our society, in our community, uh, we will see a lot of changes. So uh, this year alone we have spent almost uh, five or six million kina almost 6 million kina on education alone. He further revealed his plan for the education sector. Lavelli High School to be elevated to a technical secondary school. It's already under the process of registration. And uh, we will also build that to be a very good technical secondary school. And I'll be right behind. It's my baby school, so uh, I'll make sure that happens in my term as a member of parliament. And we are elevating uh, Tente, uh, Medisec and Mongol Secondary to level 10 and increase the number of classes. And Ton P stated that he always pushes for the schools to utilize given funds wisely and to ensure that they produce quality students to enter the tertiary institutions. In the health sector, the member highlighted that ambulance vehicles will be given to the provincial health authority so that they can cover the operational cost and support the function of the health centers in his district. He then emphasized on his plans to build a district hospital. So we will have a district hospital built in KIP. And uh, within my term, I want to make sure that that is done. So I've talked with the Minister for Health, the Secretary, uh, the CEO for Southern Highlands Provincial Health Authority. Roads and bridges are also his priority areas. The member revealed these major development projects in a news conference in Port Moresby recently. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. In her inaugural speech in yesterday's parliament sitting, newly elected member for North Bougainville, Francisca Semoso, called for the national government to honor the wishes of the people of the autonomous region of Bougainville for self-determination. Semoso said this year is supposed to be the year for parliament to ratify the results of the Bougainville referendum. Semoso stated that the lack of a deeper understanding of the Bougainville issue by members of parliament is a contributing factor towards the slow progress in addressing the region's call for independence. The outspoken leader did not mince words and called out both the leaders of PNG and ABG government's lackluster attitude towards the Arab people's call for self-determination. The most important and critical business for North Bougainville and Bougainville at this time is the ratification of Bougainville independence vote by this honorable house the Parliament of Papua New Guinea. It is the primary responsibility of the four Bougainville MPs to continuously remind this national parliament of their legal role and responsibility in dealing with this matter, Honorable Mr. Acting Speaker. The Bougainville referendum held in 2019 saw 97.8% of Bougainvillians vote for independence. Hence, Semoso called on representatives from Bougainville in both the national parliament and the autonomous Bougainville government to work together to ensure the region's aim for self-determination is achieved. My people have spoken, and this parliament, including the Bougainville members, must not shy away, Mr. Speaker, from openly discussing and dealing with the peoples, with the Bougainville people's desire for self-determination. After all, this is the only and rightful quorum, Mr. Speaker, where this matter must be discussed and decisions made to put the matter to rest once and for all. Semoso said the lack of attention given to the Bougainville issue has now created an impasse between the two governments and needs to be addressed. There is currently a political impasse between the two governments, both at the political leadership and bureaucratic um, level. Both governments need not be reminded of their responsibilities 
in progressing the Bougainville issue on the floor of this honorable parliament at the earliest opportunity. As 2023 is the planned year of the ratification vote, the immediate recommencement of the open dialogue is a must. She further said Bougainville still requires deliberate government policy and funding support from both the PNG government and ABG, such as the district service improvement program and other government grants to help support its journey to independence. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. 26 seafarers graduated recently in Kokopo after completing a week-long competency training delivered by the Kavieng National Fisheries College. The training was delivered in partnership with East New Britain Provincial Administration through the Provincial Fisheries Division under the ENBPG and the National Fisheries Authority Memorandum of Agreement for Fisheries Management and Development in the province, which capacity building and training is one of the thematic areas stipulated in the MOA. The SOLAS training is being delivered at a subsidized cost sharing responsibility between NF FA, ENB Provincial Authority, shipping companies and the seafarers. The Chairman of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, Carl Baru, and Ovia Tarube of National Fisheries College were there to present certificates to the trainees. This will have a positive impact on what the recent fall, where more than 80% of the seafarers were relieved from active duties on board vessels by the National Maritime Safety Authority due to the invalidity of solar certificates, where some have missed their jobs for six to nine months because they could not afford the cost to travel and attend similar trainings in Medang Maritime College or the Kaviang National Fisheries College. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. The SANAP One Time Program, hosted by the Universal Church of Papua New Guinea, held its second conference today since its initiation last year, 2022. Uh, we have ongoing. The second conference is an initiative aimed at raising awareness on domestic violence and violence against women. The program had a big turn up of audience, especially women and couples who gave testimonies of how the program has helped them and their families. The situation we face it for 10 years. You want your husband or your family to change. You yourself change first. The Universal Church of Papua New Guinea senior pastor Jonathan Pine stressed on the importance of the program. It's not acceptable to be a punch bag, to be suffering, to be going through problems in your family and simply think it's normal. So that's why we had this event today, the SANAP on time. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. In the 2023 South Pacific Games, New Caledonia leads the medal tally, followed by Australia and Samoa, sitting at second and third placing, respectively. Swimming at the 2023 Pacific Games will go to Team New Caledonia. A clean sweep in the relays for Team New Caledonia. It's Tahiti. Team New Caledonia is leading the 2023 Pacific Games medal tally with a total of 48 gold medals, 34 silver medals and 29 bronze, totaling up to 101 medals altogether. The runner-up team is Australia with 24 gold, 16 silver and 7 bronze, adding up to 47 medals altogether. In the third placing, Samoa sits with 21 gold, 11 silver and 5 bronze. The host country, Solomon Islands, sit at fifth spot after Tahiti with 7 gold, 10 silver and 8 bronze, which allows them to secure the fifth spot. Papua New Guinea is sitting at the 10th placing with 4 gold, 5 silver and 11 bronze, totaling up to 20 medals. 
Louis Mangu, Trukai Sports. During the launching of the Governor's Cup for Western Highlands Province, all the members of Parliament for the province agreed to support rugby league in the province for the benefit of the youths. Present was Governor for Western Highlands Province, Wai Rapa, Minister for Defence and Member for Tambul Nebilia, Win Bakri Daki, Member for Mool Bayer, Jacob Cobb Maki, and representatives from the Minister for State-Owned Enterprise, William Duma, and a representative for the late member for Day Open, late Stephen Pym. The four districts will have their mini competitions before taking their teams up to take part in the Governor's Cup. A total of four committee members were appointed by the four members of parliament in the last few months to lead this district competition. Upon presenting their keynote speech, member for Mulbaya, Jacob Maki, says he will support his district competition as well as the main competition. Maki appealed to the youths to have bigger aims in the future. Mulbaya Rumza must become sport district. Tabulemla must become a sport district. Western Islands must be a sport district. One other time, Mr. Mandela, Mr. Mr. Mulgaza, boy, you will say, close to you will have a fight. Boy, back, me cut in the trauma, go to war on a bottom. No, but many people say something with us. Last time, me talk, you know, same. Maki committed a total of 200,000 kina to support the Governor's Cup and 300,000 kina to support the district tournament. Governor Rapa, upon giving his keynote speech, says he wants you to respect law and order in the province whilst taking part in the game. Rapa thanked Minister for State-Owned Enterprises and Member for Hagen Hopen William Duma for always supporting Mount Hagen Eagles over the past years and this year. On behalf of the Minister, Chief Executive Officer for Mount Hagen City Authority, Leo Noki, says Minister will also support the competition and made a commitment of 250,000 kina towards the competition. The tournament will start early December and will continue on till next year. The Governor's Cup tournament will be led by the coordinator, Samuel Maniad. Sharon Ngnui, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. You're watching Trukai Sports. Hebo Construction PNG Limited is the naming rights sponsor to Team NCD for the 8th PNG Games, scheduled for January 10th to 20th, 2024. Ebo Constructions Limited General Manager Jamie Mitchell presented Team NCD with a 350,000 kina sponsorship on Thursday at their head office in Six Mile. Present to receive the check on behalf of National Capital District Commission, where Community and Social Service Director Janet Hawa and a team NCD General Management is Claudia Toak, the Deputy Team Manageress, Xavier Wablasu, the Deputy Team Manager, and Diane Paliau, the head of Team NCD Secretariat. Director for Community and Social Services, Janet Awa, who is also the head of delegations for Team NCD, thanked Ebo Constructions for the support. She said the support will go a long way to help the team prepare for the PNG Games. Ebo Constructions Limited General Manager Jamie Mitchell said the Constantino group of companies is a strong supporter of sporting events in the country and they are happy to support Team NCD. Deputy Team Manager Xavier Wablasu said Team NCD is looking forward to taking 450 athletes, officials and support staff to the Games. Louis Maingu, Trukai Sports. The 2023 National Kickboxing Tournament is set to take place next month in Leh, Morobe Province. Godwin Eki reports. Now the kickboxers here at the Sejun Guys Stadium have been preparing for almost four months now under the Samson Anam Desert Storm Kickboxing Club. 
Now, these fighters, many of them will be traveling to Lei Morabe province next month uh, to attend the national championships for future tournaments where PNG representative side may be selected from that tournament. Now, the Desert Storm Kickboxing Club is also preparing to host its uh, club championship, which is coming up next week. Now, here with me also is President uh, for Desert Storm Kickboxing Club, Nelson Samson. Now, Nelson, just tell us about the tournament that's happening this weekend, as well as an update for the national championships uh, taking place in Lay next month. Uh, thank you. Thank you, NTV, and uh, thank you, the crew members. Uh, as you can see, I've, uh, I've got a lot of kids training under Desert Storm promotion here, Most, uh, almost 70 to 80 students. Most of them are going to take part in this coming Sunday, 26th November, a kickboxing showdown here at Tokorara, uh, which will be hosted by a Spider-Man, the Spider-Man kickboxing promotion, uh, which is Thomas Tagli. Uh, most of them are going to take part here, and uh, as you can see, many of them never experienced any ring fight like this before, but... Now, Nelson is also preparing himself here at the St. John Guys Stadium using the field, the track and the gym, of course, for his upcoming international fight in Sydney in February next year. Now, Nelson, just tell us a bit about your preparations for the international bout as well. Uh, I've, been, I've been training very hard for this couple of uh, this year, full year. While under training myself, I'm also training these upcoming kickboxes. It's not to build myself, it's not to be... I'm trying to be an ambassador and role model to the community, this city, this country. I'm playing my part uh, to contribute myself to train this interested student. And as, as I'm looking towards my title fights on the match with, uh, under the PNG K KBF, I'm also looking forward for my big international fight in February starting at 2024. Now, as you can see, training here uh, at the St. John Guys Stadium, uh, senior kickboxers who are also preparing to attend this weekend's tournament. Now, this tournament will be used to identify top players to represent the Southern region who will attend the national championships in Lei Morabe province. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. The Kerowagi Nines team, after attending the Hevea Cup tournament in Port Mosby, are stranded and need support from their local member to have the players flown back to Simbu. Now, only two weeks ago, the Hevea Nines Rugby League tournament took place here in Port Mosby, one of its inaugural competitions. Now, the Kerowagi Nines Rugby League team, both the men's and women's team, uh, who attended the tournament here in Port Mosby are currently stranded in the nation's capital. Now, I spoke earlier to the team's head coach as well as the captains of both teams, and here's what they had to say. Avia Nines, I've been hosted at Avia Nines in Port Mosby. I've been playing with the team and I've been playing with them. I've been playing with them. Lastly, I'm... Lo mikir belum dah gue begini, nampak belum dah kami setakat beli lagi. Di luar sana belum problem, lo distrik belum dah, belum dah setakat beli. Nah, nah, belum dah ustu, ustu am dah fan racing night now. Ah, tomorrow am balo ya lo sporting. Now also from Chimbu Province is PNG International Rep Joan Kuman, who has been representing Papua New Guinea in the international stage, representing not only her province of Chimbu, but PNG as a whole. Now I spoke to Joan as well upon uh, also playing a host to the team from Kerawagi in the Chimbu Province. Now here's what she had to say. Now this all beginning comes out of backside to me and uh... And more upcoming ones, we will come all the way to Kerawagi. Lo Avea Nines lo play this tournament. Now they do all play this tournament finish two weeks ago. Now all I go back again, now, now you look at more sun up the backside of me. Now Kerawagi Spice Nines rugby league team for both the men's and women's team will be hosting a fundraiser here in Port Mosby at the Sports Inn Club starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow until late Sunday morning. Now interested people out there who are willing to support the team can come to Sports Inn Club and socialize with the team. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. 
That ends Chukai Sports. The Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours. For the southern region, Port Mosby City, partly cloudy with a chance of few rain showers and drizzles. Daru, cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Kerema, cloudy periods with some showers. Alotau, mostly fine and partly cloudy. Popondeta, partly cloudy with brief showers and drizzles. To the Momasi region, Lay City, partly cloudy with possible showers. Medeng, partly cloudy with possible showers and drizzles. We work in Vanimo, partly cloudy with brief showers and drizzles. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, partly cloudy. Kaviang, mostly fine, partly cloudy. Kokopon Rabaul, mostly fine, partly cloudy. Kimbe, cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorms. Buka, partly cloudy. To the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, partly cloudy with few possible showers and possible thunderstorms. Goroka and Kundiawa, partly cloudy with few showers. Mendy and Wabek, partly cloudy with few possible showers and thunderstorms. Looking at the wind speed, waters of South and PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Karama to Yule Island to Hood Point to Samari Islands, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Samari Island to Cape Vogel to Eastern and Western Milan Bay Islands, seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters north of Cape Vogel to Huen Gulf to Finchafen, seas 0.3 to 1 meters. Waters of Finchafen through VTS Dampier Strait to CRC Long Island, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Long Island to Medang to Wewek to Vanimo and Northern PNG Indonesian border, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas 0.3 to 1.3 meters. Waters of East and West New Britain to New Ireland to Bougainville, seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Looking at the ocean forecast, coral seas, seas slight to moderate, east to southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. Solomon Sea, seas slight, southeast winds of 10 to 15 knots. Bismarck Seas, seas slight, east to southeast winds of 10 to 15 knots with gusts. Pacific Oceans, seas smooth to slight, southwest winds of 5 to 10 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Saturday, the 25th of November, 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG.